a joy to welcome each of you again this morning. Pray that the Lord will speak to us through his word as we consider this very, very well-known passage of scripture. Jesus, the shepherd, is here with us this morning. Shepherds and sheep were an important part of life in Israel 2,000, 4,000, 5,000 years ago, and they still are today. King David was a shepherd when he was a youth, but in Psalm 23, he is speaking as a sheep. And in John chapter 10, verses 1 to 18, Jesus, the good shepherd, is speaking about his sheep. A good shepherd understands his sheep and gives his life completely for them. A true pastor has the heart of a good shepherd. The word pastor in English actually means shepherd. To teach properly from Psalm 23, together with John chapter 10, I would need several hours. So this message, in this message, I will need to summarize. We will look at five important factors in Psalm 23 and link these very briefly with the teaching of Jesus in John chapter 10. Factor number one, the essential factor. David could say, the Lord is my shepherd. Having a personal relationship with Jesus is the most important factor, reality, need, in our lives. David knew that, and he shares this wonderful truth. David had a personal relationship with God. He lived every day in God's life and in God's love, like many of us here this morning, praise God. Now in John chapter 10, verse 14, Jesus says, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Knowing in the New Testament especially nearly always means experiencing, to know by experience, not merely in your head. And as our brother has just been sharing with us this morning, he has come to know the love and the mercy and the provision of God in his life, like many others, some even here this morning. Jesus says, I know my sheep. I know them personally. And my sheep know me. Is that true? in your life and in your heart this morning? Having a personal relationship with God through Jesus is the most important thing in our lives, the most important factor, reality of our lives. 
Can you say this morning, the Lord is my shepherd? Factor number two, verses two to three. The everyday factor. The promise of God's daily provision. God provides our daily physical needs. David could say, I shall not lack anything I need. He did not say anything I want. God supplies our needs, not necessarily all our wants. Sheep, like all living animals, need two important things. What are they? They need food and they need water. David says, my shepherd enables me to lie down peacefully in green pastures or on green grass. Pastures is a, an English word that just means large areas for grazing where a farmer can send his cows or his buffaloes or whatever and these animals can then eat the grass in a field or in a large meadow. The shepherd makes me lie down peacefully in green grass. He leads me beside still or peaceful or quiet waters. Now that's necessary. John chapter 10, verse 9, what does Jesus teach us? His sheep will go in and out and find pasture, food. What does Jesus teach in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 34? If our relationship with God in Jesus is correct and his purpose is top priority in our lives, he has promised to meet all our basic needs, not our wants. Do you trust him? Or are you stressed out? with worry. I mentioned just now, still waters was necessary. Sheep, like most animals, will not drink water that is disturbed. The water must be very, very still. Why? Otherwise, if the animal tries to drink water that is rippling or moving around, it could choke. Sometimes when we're reading the Word of God, brothers and sisters, if you're feeding on the Word of God spiritually, make sure that your mind, your heart, and the area that you're in, the room or wherever, is peaceful is quiet, is still. Because if the Holy Spirit speaks to you through his word, the Holy Spirit never shouts. The Holy Spirit whispers. Very quiet. So if you're not quiet, if you're not peaceful, you will never 
hear what the Spirit wants to reveal to you and say to you through his word. Our good shepherd not only meets our physical needs, he meets our spiritual needs every day. In verse 3, David writes, He refreshes my soul, my spirit, my inner self. He refreshes my inner being. That's the personal and that's the private need. And secondly, he guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake as well as for my namesake. For his name's sake, he guides me, but he will not guide me unless I am following. Brothers and sisters, there's no use praying and asking Jesus to guide you by his spirit if you're not willing to follow. What does Jesus say in John chapter 10, verse 4? My sheep follow me. Are you following your good shepherd today? Or are you still trying to go your own stubborn, self-centered way? Are you being refreshed each day by the Holy Spirit as you read and meditate quietly on the word of God. Factor number three, verse four of Psalm 23, the ensuring factor. We just had the essential factor. We just had the everyday factor. Now we have the ensuring factor. The assurance of God's presence with us every moment of every day. When we walk in the paths of righteousness with our shepherd, he may lead us sometimes through the valley of the shadow of death. On the road between Jerusalem and Jericho, there was an area of about of several hundred meters which passed through high cliffs, mountain sides on both sides of the road. Jesus used this particular part of the road in his parable of the Samaritan, of the Good Samaritan, you remember? When this man was traveling between Jer Jerusalem and Jericho, this area of the road was very well known for a very simple reason. The sunlight never reached the road surface. It was always dark. It was a perfect place for robbers. It was dangerous for travelers. And the local name for this area translates as the valley of the shadow of death. It was all that part of the road was always in shadow. There are times when as we follow our shepherd, he may require us for his purposes to lead us through the valley of the shadow, not always of death, 
but of discipline, of training, of maturing us spiritually. Just like Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 took his disciples straight into a storm. Why? To develop their faith and therefore their relationship with their shepherd. What does David say? David was well aware of this part of the road, as many people in this area. Even though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil. Is there fear in your heart this morning? David could say, I will not fear any evil. Why? Because you, my shepherd, are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. They assure me that you, my shepherd, are near me, guiding me and watching over me. Praise God. As I mentioned just now, Jesus took his disciples into a storm for three basic reasons, I believe. One, to strengthen their relationship with himself. Two, to strengthen their faith and their trust in him in every situation. And three, to give us the experience to help others in their time of difficulty or of need. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. If we're walking closely with our shepherd, we do not need to fear anything. The extra factor, verses 5 to 6, Experiencing God's bountiful care, God's bonus. David states four extras, and I mentioned them quickly. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You, Lord, provide all I need, as we've heard this morning, even in a hostile environment. Two, you anoint my head with oil. Oil in the Bible is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 teaches, do not get drunk on wine or on alcohol. Instead, and the verb here really means, be always be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just be filled once, but continually be being filled on a regular basis. We need daily anointing and refreshing, brothers and sisters, by the Holy Spirit. Three, my cup overflows continually. Now to be realistic, Quite often, our cup is not full enough to overflow. But in this situation with David, his cup was overflowing. And a cup, a heart, can only overflow if it is filled to the brim. You know that. My heart will only overflow as the Holy Spirit fills me continually with a sense of his presence and therefore his joy and strength. Do you spend time alone with God every day? If not, your cup, your heart will never be filled and therefore will never overflow. It may soon get dry 
or empty. We can experience the life and the joy of God our shepherd in every situation with a full and of overflowing heart as Jesus teaches us in John chapter 10 verse 10. For sure, God's point four, God's goodness, surely, God's mercy, God's grace, his unfailing love will follow me and will be with me all the days of my earthly life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I trust so. John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Matthew 28, verse 20. And the last factor, verse 6 of Psalm 23, the eternal factor. You see, God is not only the God of the past and the present, he's also the God, our shepherd of the future. Our relationship with Jesus, our good shepherd, does not end in death. That's the beginning of phase two. This is phase one. Phase two is the eternal factor where we will be with him forever. Hallelujah. What does the Holy Spirit say through David? I will dwell in the house or the dwelling place of God forever. What does Jesus teach in Matthew 14, verses 1 to 3? You believe in God, the Father? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Are you excited? Are you ready? You ready to move on? Jesus is right now not only interceding for you and me, he is preparing a place where you will live forever. And as the Apostle Paul shares with us in 1 Corinthians, eye has not seen, human eye has not yet seen, human ears has not yet heard, and human understanding has not yet visualized or understood all that God is preparing, are you listening? All that God is preparing for those who love him, hallelujah, and are following him in obedience. Are you following your shepherd this morning? Conclusion. If you have not yet entered into a personal relationship with Jesus, the Good Shepherd, this morning is a wonderful time to do that. Secondly, you may know Jesus as your shepherd, brothers and sisters, but you have stopped reading the Word of God and you have stopped obeying and following your shepherd. Now is a good opportunity for you to confess and to come back into your relationship with Jesus. He is here among us by his spirit. Let us be quiet just for a moment in the presence of Jesus our shepherd. He has spoken to us through his word by his spirit. We all now have an opportunity to respond to him. Let's just take one moment very quickly. Loving Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our shepherd. You've done everything necessary for us to enter into and develop our relationship with you. Maybe we tr maybe we, may we be true to you and obey you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.